Okay, so I'm going to explain to you the difference between uh, your wrong intuition of closed individualism and what is the alternative. So closed individualism is the idea that you have been endowed by the universe with your own plasma screen TV, uh, which is the screen of your consciousness. Here are where all the images and sensations and sounds that, you, that are ever felt happen. They happen in this plasma screen TV that scrolls along towards the future. Um, and then you know, some other person fundamentally is their own screen. And this, this is um, assumed both by the Abrahamic religions, um, by some Hinduism, and it is uh, assumed by what I call normie atheists. So people who were Christians before or uh, Jews before or Muslims before, and your, your alternative now is that you still have screens. People still have fundamental souls that begun, be, began at some point. So maybe you think you place it at being a toddler. Maybe some people think babies are conscious. At some point, you are your own particular screen, and then at some point, this breaks. So you shatter this screen, and it shatters into little pieces, and at that point, it's no longer conscious. And that's the end of all existence. You came from nothing, you go back to nothing. If you're a Christian, Muslim, Jew, you believe that you go on for eternity, either to heaven or to hell. Um, that's closed individualism. And this is absolutely idiotic from a physicalist perspective. This is not what's going to happen. And so I realized this when I was pretty young, like 11 or 12, but I put it out of my mind because consensus reality uh, would have thought I was crazy, but yet I couldn't consistently uh, formulate this within physicalism. And there are various reasons for that. So let's, let's see some of the reasons that people have this intuition or try to defend this intuition. There are good evolutionary reasons why you have the intuition in the first place. It's not just that religion made it up. Um, and before that, we didn't have these intuitions. I think that these are very, uh, that these go very deep. Um, into, into your psyche. And, and that's why it's very few religions that even contradict this. Buddhism is the best example of one which is closer to physical reality, or the closest, I would argue, um, out of all of them. And so, so the reason this doesn't work, the reason you're not a closed individual, like this is my name, right? This is Mario. And this is his own soul with his own plasma screen TV. Uh, the reason this doesn't work is for several reasons. For the first one is memory. People try to think, oh, well, I have the same memories. So at some point here, it's still me because whatever is going on in this screen was, is the memory of whatever happened here. And I don't have the memories of some other person here. I don't have the memories of Lindsay. So therefore, um, this is my consciousness. This was my consciousness. But that's, that, that's very easy to sort of uh, debunk. Because what happens when I uh, take a piece of this person's brain and put them in mine? Just brain surgery, right? On whose screen are these memories going to happen if we just switch them around? And this is something that you could physically do. It's not just um, an abstract experiment. This is something you could do. I could take someone's memories, put them in uh, another brain, uh, as if this brain belonged to someone, as if this screen belonged to someone. That's the misconception. The memories are not happening to anyone in particular, to different screens. They're happening on the screen of the universe itself. They're happening on the screen of the universe itself. So they're just located from their, wh where they're located. If you've been exposed to Buddhism before, you get this. You get the idea of selflessness that experiences are nothing more than what they are. They are selfless aggregates. They occur to themselves. They don't occur to anyone in particular. And this is a physicalist view. Uh, they only occur on the screen of the universe where they're occurring. We can switch memories as much as we want. And in fact, you're forgetting your memories, right? Like most of this, um, who if you now go into pictures and say, oh, that was Mario all along, whatever actually were uh, the memories occurring, being instantiated in that brain at that point, um, are different and are 
Um, and then most experiences are obviously forgotten. Uh, so memory is not, is not a good uh, surrogate or um, vehicle for a notion of, of identity. That's one thing. The other thing that people try to use, okay, memories don't work out. What about causality? And so they use this magic word. They use this magic word as if magic words could, could save their soul. You don't have a soul. Okay, so the other thing that people try to do is uh, invent magic words. So they'll say causality is what preserves my consciousness. So there is some causality from this brain state to this brain state that connects these brain states. And therefore, there is a flow. There is someone moving through this, um, which is different from having come from here to here. So there, there's a precise way in which I did not come from this other soul. I am my own soul, my own stream uh, going through the universe because causality, right? They'll use the magic word, but they won't actually explain what is happening. What sort of special case of causality occurs within a brain that doesn't occur anywhere else? How do you draw those boundaries? Because obviously I could define causality from any location and any event to anything else. I could take a lightning strike that happened a thousand years ago and draw causal arrows from that to a beta protein in a cell in my body right now. There is going to be a statistical correlation between that happening and this happening, if you really wanted to. You could, you could find causality within anything. So what is the magic in causality? I simply don't see it. There are many neural events going on, and again, we, you know, what happens when we um, merge brains, once we merge together connectomes? Um, what happens to the ca causal vectors? Where are they pushing my soul to? Um, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. I take half of this person's brain, put it with the other half, with this half, and then this half with this half, where are the causal uh, vectors pushing my consciousness? This is stupid. This is arbitrary. Um, so that's another point taken down. What's another point? Okay, what's the other thing that people come up with? Atoms, okay? And this is my favorite because it's probably the, the most foolish of them all. Um, it's the idea of atoms. It's like, wait a minute. My brain is made up of these red atoms. And you must be a different person because you're made up of blue atoms. And of course, there's, there's a way in which to define a person, uh, which is consistent. But experience itself should not be attributed to particular uh, persons with screens, with their own consciousness. Uh, this is the error. Uh, because and one way that people try to defend that error is by appealing to a notion of you are made of different atoms than me. And this is wrong. Go learn quantum mechanics. There is no way to actually define a particle position in the first place. Particles are not billiard balls. And I'm going to link to articles that explain this more in detail because I'm not going to go through it all here. I'm not gonna sit here and explain quantum mechanics to you. This is something that you could do on your own free time. But before you try to defend your notions, your, your intuitive notions with physics, with an appeal to physics, it might be a good idea to learn the physics. So if you have this notion that we are made of separate billiard ball particles, you're simply wrong. But even in the case where you were assuming sort of this uh, ancient idea of Democritus and, and people of old that, that we were made of little billiard ball particles that had precise locations in space and time, you would still be made of different atoms than someone who was Mario at age of eight. So Mario at age of eight, this is Mario at age of 21, Mario at age of eight had his own atoms, which were just as different as some other random eight-year-old. So explain to me how consciousness came from here to here and not from here to here. Explain that to me. If it's the atoms protecting your soul, 
So the only alternative seems to be that there are no souls. And this is the view um, that, is, that is just physical. That is just physical. This is not some extra metaphysical assumption. This is an extra metaphysical assumption, the idea that there is someone fundamentally traveling. Just because it feels like from each uh, point location. And you shouldn't take the, the analogy of point too seriously either. Because the truth is that consciousness might be isomorphic to a mathematical structure which corresponds to neither points nor lines. And therefore it's hard to conceptualize what it actually is from the inside of it, of the stream itself, from the inside of existence itself from the sum of existence. Because you are um, a little piece of it all. You're, you're, you're a little factor, uh, a subcomponent of a factor. And so the best analogy that I could use is to use mathematical. So you have tangent of x. And this looks like this. But this is the same as sine of x over cosine of x. And this is what happens when you divide these two very different shapes. And so this entity, this structure, is contained within the sum structure. It's contained, it's literally there. If you were a good mathematician who could see the truth, you would see these facts embedded within the structure. But if you are these facts themselves, you, you can't see that you're a part of this. And so that's the problem. And then this is made up of even further subcomponents, like this. and. And so these are all their own experiences, and they can't tell from the inside of themselves that they are part of the sum experience. So my claim is that from a physicalist perspective, you are just what you are, but you can't tell that you're the sum thing from each location of God's body, in a way. It's like God has many eyes, but each eye can't tell, uh, can't see what the others are seeing. And so that is the general case. So there are no uh, separate souls, or perhaps even little fractionated souls. But it might be the case that we are just um, every possible experience, and all of them are happening, and that they're all equally true. The alternative would be solipsism. The alternative would be to believe none of this, to have none of this physicalist picture, and to assume solipsism at that point. Why not just assume solipsism? If you believe your intuitive experience more than this because this seems too counterintuitive, might as well be a solipsist. I only have evidence of my own immediate experience right now. Just believe in that then. But the idea of closed individualism is like, is kind of a silly compromise. The idea that you have um, a bounded soul that only stretches to some point in time. Um, so, so then people ask, what happens with death then? Um, do, do I actually die in this case? And the answer is no. You don't die in the fundamental sense of ceasing to exist forever. You can die in the sense of um, being, you know, entropy diluting all your uh, many world's branches to the point where none of them have your identity at some point. None of them bear the memories of uh, whoever you are. None of them identify with you. Even there, um, it's, it's pretty speculative to assume that not a single branch um, even contains you, um, contains memories, or associates itself with you. Okay, Emma, what happens when my narrative stream, because you still feel like you have a narrative stream, it's so hard to get over it, and uh, this leads to tremendous confusion. You think, okay, this is my narrative stream. What happens at the point of death? What happens when, um, you know, I, I was a marine and I was in the Solomon Islands and I threw a grenade into a cave and then a Japanese soldier threw it back at me and then it blew me up into pieces. There's clear, clearly no way for uh, conscious continuity of any kind, but I, my claim was that there was no conscious continuity in the first place. So what happens in those moments? Where does my soul go? Where, how do you... Um, define experience moving from one place to another. And if you're, you're asking this question, you're not getting it because you think that experience is traveling in the first place, like there's a linear sequence of events. 
uh, within phenomenology and their art. That's the point. Uh, so, it, but, but it is plausible that at, at the very verge of death, you have the very last, most simple experience that you could possibly have. The simplest possible computation um, which can encode for experience. But it necessarily has no substrate dependent information being coded because it's the simplest experience ever. So therefore, there is no difference between that soldier um, in the Solomon Islands in World War II and some other transhuman entity a million years from now in the Carina Nebula. And they forgot to uh, take into account that a supernova might go off. And so a supernova went off and it destroyed them. Um, and you know, for a brief flash of moment, right before his brain was fully destroyed, he also had like that simplest experience uh, through um, extensive injury. And then the very next moment, there was just mush. And obviously there's no experience in that mush. So the question is, how are you reincarnated? How does each stream go into its next experience? Are we just randomly allotted once we share the same experience? Because I would claim that this experience is physically the same. It is physically the same because it is, it is stripped of all um, specificity. It is stripped of all substrate dependent information. This experience do, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far it is in spatial temporal locations or whatever. Um, it doesn't know from its inside that it is being produced from there, being harvested from this uh, soldier and being harvested from this transhuman entity. It's just what it is. So it's the same platonic solid. It's the same experience. So then the question is, how do you come out of the well? This is the well, the source. This is the, the simplest possible experience you can have. You can't be non-experience, obviously, right? You have to, experience only exists from its own inside. So then the question is, how do you come out? So Hindus uh, traditionally would think you are reincarnated. You are a soul, and then you are reincarnated into some other stream. You become this potential, and then you just choose where you want to be reincarnated. But that assumes you had a soul. Buddhists had a more sophisticated view. It was the view uh, that you are being, um, th there is birth into every moment. So every moment is one of birth and death. And therefore, you are all of them. So it, it makes no sense to say, which, which toddler do I become? You become all of them. And from each point location, you can't tell that you are the others. You also can't tell that you're just as much some old person and some random animal. You're, you know, you're some dinosaurs if they were conscious. You're anything. You're all experiences that could ever exist from their own location. And so everyone's in hell and everyone's in heaven and everyone is everywhere in between and we are the same thing. Um, so that's, that's the answer.